This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. New developments in a case from the 1970s, that story and much more next. Good evening and thank you for joining us in HD on Service Electric Cable Vision Channel 513 and in SD on Channel 13. Stream us on your TV with the free Samsung Productions app and Google Chromecast and Apple TV. Here's your Thursday headlines from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. After more than four decades, one of three unidentified individuals exhumed from the Maple Hill Cemetery in Hanover Township has been identified during a press conference today at Troop N in Hazleton. State Police along with Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis announced the identity of the woman who was found dead in the woods in Rice Township back in 1970. The identification was made possible with the latest technology. Forensic anthropologists from the University of South Florida and the University of North Texas Center for Human Identification and the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. Also present today was Mitchell Johnson, nephew of the deceased. We were able to get a positive identification between um, Jane Doe, 1970, and Lucille Marie Fry. Um, and now that Jane Doe, 1970, has been identified as Lucille Marie Fry, we are um, putting the plans together to have a proper burial for um, Lucille. All my life, it's been 46 years, nothing was being done. Then all of a sudden, forensics came in to be and uh, this happened. I'm so proud of my man, Sean, <laughs> Stephanie, because it, it's a big relief. It was actually, you know, Mitchell showing up at the cemetery that day that really sparked this whole investigation, rekindled it, this cold case. And, uh, you know, without him being there, uh, without his family's DNA, this case would not have been solved as far as the identification is concerned. So we're, we're very ecstatic about that. The technology that's available today uh, was not available when, when this case uh, started, uh, but we can utilize the, that technology now uh, with the information that we have. And sometimes it's just that little bit of information that we need that allows us to, uh, to basically solve it, find out who it is, and that's your first step and then uh, coming to a successful conclusion for it. The stab staggering number of missing and unidentified persons cases in the United States has been deemed our nation's silent mass disaster. We need to do something to change that. This is why um, the state police, the Luzerne County District Attorney's Office, and NamUs will be hosting a Missing Persons Day 2018 on May 31st of this year at Wilkes University. If you have a family member that you think is missing and under, you know, suspicious circumstances, something where uh, you haven't seen that person in a long time, come out to us that day. We'll have lots of people there. Um, we're, we're asking that you bring uh, photographs of your family member. Um, biological family members are uh, requested as well because we'd like to take a DNA sample that day for submission. And the investigation continues into the death of Lucille Marie Fry. Anyone with information is asked to call state police at Troop N. And yesterday's winter storm prompted another cancellation of classes for the Hazleton Area School District. With this week's two snow days included, the district has had 13 snow days total. According to the district website, the last day of school is currently scheduled for June 22nd for both students and teachers. However, Superintendent Brian Uplinger tells us that there is a possibility the state will grant a waiver for some of the days missed due to the weather situation. However, he does not know what the outcome will be at this point. The superintendent added that he will not have a solid answer on the date for Hazleton Area High School graduation until the district hears from the state. We'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, the last day of classes has been finalized for students at Holy Family Academy in Hazleton. Principal Donald Basic tells us that while the school does follow the rules of the Hazleton Area School District, it's allowed to go by hours if it chooses. On Tuesday, principals from the Diocese of Scranton met, and it was determined that Holy Family Academy's definite last day will be Friday, June 15th. 
For the second straight year, the weather has taken a toll on the annual Girardville Irish Day Parade. The 15th annual parade was set to take place this Saturday. However, Donald Dudash, one of the parade's organizers, tells us that a special emergency meeting was held today and that the parade has been postponed. Dudash says that the borough is small and Girardville does not have the resources to remove all of yesterday's snow in time for Saturday. And there are many participants coming from far away. As a result, the parade will now take place on Saturday, April 14th. However, the celebration at the Hibernian House will go on as planned this Saturday at 1 p.m. Because the weather has interfered two years in a row, the parade committee is going to consider whether or not to move the parade to April permanently. It was a chance for employers and potential employees to get together. Today marked the 22nd annual Greater Hazleton Job Fair. 50 employers were on hand looking for new workers. We have 50 employers here offering a wide variety of employment opportunities. Um, there's, you know, for anything from upper management, um, there's industries here, healthcare, even some educational opportunities to further advanced degrees. So there's definitely something for everybody. Today's job fair was held at Genetti's on Route 309 in Hazel Township. The popular Bowl for Kids' Sake is back this Saturday at the Bowl Arena in West Hazleton. Help out our local Big Brothers Big Sisters organization by signing up a team and or by making a donation. Their website bbbsnepa.com slash bfks2018 spells it all out nice and easy. You can just show up on Saturday as well. The fun starts around 10 a.m. I'll be there at 9.45 a.m. rolling out a first ball if you want a good laugh before breakfast. If the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were real, this would be their favorite segment of SSP TV news. I still have hope they exist somewhere. Call now to enter to win a box of 12 slices of Frankie's cold pizza with their signature sauce and cheese blend baked fresh with no preservatives. Call 570-459-9813, extension 104. We need your full name and full phone number, and we'll pick a winner at random. Remember, you can only win once every 30 days on SSP TV. Coming up next, our Volunteer of the Week, our local weather forecast, and an interview with a former professional football player. And in sports, it's five uninterrupted minutes of Cougar basketball talk with Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman. This is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Let's get to know someone in our community. It's time for our Volunteer of the Week on SSP TV News. It's a person, couple, or a group who makes this a better place to live. And it's brought to you by Workforce Resources Staffing Company in West Hazleton. With temporary to permanent jobs and seasonal and temporary placements, you must apply in person. Here's Lisa Sugart with our Volunteer of the Week. I'm very pleased to announce that this week's Volunteer of the Week is Marge Mattioli of Sugarloaf, and she is here today volunteering for 25 years with the wonderful Meals on Wheels organization, and you were nominated by your son, Lewis, who is a wonderful guy who's been here talking about running many times at our studio. Um, what made you want to get into Meals on Wheels? This is such a great organization that delivers meals to people's homes. It is a wonderful organization. And I started because my mother at one point and my father-in-law had each received Meals on Wheels. And I just thought there was a need for it. And when they passed on, I decided to volunteer. So now you're doing great things by taking meals to people's homes, but I'm sure you're getting a lot out of it as well. Absolutely. They're so sweet. They're all very kind. And I get blessed every day. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So you've made a lot of friends. I have. So now, I guess, about how many people do you deliver? And what do you take to their homes? I take uh, two meals, actually, in, in the, for each uh, client. And it's a cold meal and a hot meal. And I do six people, five, six people each time I deliver. That's really nice. Now, you were telling me, which I was not aware of, that you know it, you would think it's mainly senior citizens you're taking meals to, but not necessarily so. No. Uh, people have surgeries. They can't take care of themselves, and their family isn't close enough to help them, so they call Meals on Wheels. That's a great thing. So there's a lot of volunteers out there making this organization run. It's all volunteer. And you tell me they're not getting subsidized. They're not getting funding for this organization. No. It's all through what the clients pay. And people send donations in. 
uh, in memory of loved ones who's passed away or they just want to send in a donation. Wow, so we would hope that maybe the people watching today would be inspired. We like to inspire people with this segment, the Volunteer of the Week. We wanted to, you know, put the spotlight on Meals on Wheels because you hear so many great things about this organization for so many years. So maybe you could, you know, tell people why would they want to get involved to help out and be a volunteer like you are. Just because it's fun. I mean, actually, it is fun. The people are kind. They're sweet. And you get a good feeling when you do it. And this uh, Hazelton Meals on Wheels has been in existence for, uh, we're finishing our 45th year. Wow, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. I would think for some people as well, you might be the only friendly face they see for a long it's time. It's true, it's true. And uh, sometimes they need a little bit of help. They, they need their shoes tied. They need a, a jar opened, or just a little bit of conversation. So if people want to help out Meals on Wheels, they can volunteer, they can donate, or maybe they need the services. So uh, we have their phone number. It's 570-501-1700, um, located down in the former Central Air Freight Building. Is that correct? correct. Yes. All righty. So we congratulate you because I think that's a, a big thing. 25 years to be doing this, taking time out of your life all the time to go and make the lives of someone else better. So congratulations for being our Volunteer of the Week. And we hope that you'll get a phone call that maybe more people want to join you. I hope so. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations to Marge Mattioli for our Volunteer of the Week. 25 years with Meals on Wheels organization. And if you know someone who's a dedicated volunteer as well, you can nominate them and email their name to me, lisa at ssptv.com. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. I did see a lot of melting today, but there's a lot of snow out there. However, a warm up ahead. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight will be mostly cloudy and we'll have a low of 23 degrees with wind 10 to 14 miles per hour. Friday, we do have a chance of flurries, partly sunny, high of 37 degrees. At night, mostly cloudy and then becoming clear, low of 21. Saturday is mostly sunny with a high in the upper 30s. Saturday night, 20% chance of snow showers with a low of 22 degrees. Sunday, mostly sunny, high of 37 partly cloudy at night, low of 21 degrees. Monday is sunny and we'll get into the 40s and then Monday night mostly clear, low of 21 degrees. Lamont White is back in the Hazleton area. As much as I want to thank Lamont, you come just to hang out with me. I know you're here to um, promote your camps, but I've been waiting because it's, it's been a while yeah. since your last um, football camp in the area. And I've, I've had a question I've been wanting to ask you I'm about Saquon Barkley, Penn State Saquon Barkley, what you thought of him. I mean, he went through the combine, turned a lot of heads. I think he's one of the best running backs that I've seen in the last 20 years. He's that good. And it's so funny because me and Major was talking about him. And, you know, Barry Sanders in the Heisman with Mage, and Mage said the same thing. This kid is special. And a lot of people are talking about Major Harris. We'll be talking about him in a little bit. Um, when, when you see someone do something like that, that's not easy to do as you're going through the NFL combat. I'm sure you've been through some things like this, even though they may make it look easy. The, the, the stuff that he's doing 225, 29 times, you got a lineman that can't even do that many times. What can you do? How many times do you think you can do that? Uh, well, I did, I did it 18. Okay. Yeah. I'd like, I'm going to try that once. Maybe I'll do that before we air this segment. I'll see you at the gym. Maybe I won't be in the, into work that day. I'm bringing all this up because um, people like Saquon Barkley, um, high-level football players, they have to start somewhere. And if you're in this area, you can start at the Lamont White football camp. Would you invite anybody to come out, even if they're just starting out? They're like, hey, I want to try this. Or is this for people who are into football already? Oh, anybody can come out because, I mean, you want to try to better some of the kids' skills, get ready for, you know, whatever they're trying to go to college or some of them trying to play, in, you know, high school or whatever you know we don't have no it's an age limit but we work with all kind of kids so me and Major been doing it for a long time so anybody can come out and major harris i mean just hearing him talk at the one camp i was at, i could just sit there all day i won't do any of that football stuff but just hearing him talk um all american from west virginia university um he brings a lot to the camps how's he doing i mean he's looking forward to coming back up to hazelton and what does he bring i mean do the kids walk away and say wow i really yeah, like yeah. this major guy he brings a lot that's <laughs> why i was trying to stress to some of these kids to have a guy like him teaching you a quarterback, teaching you wide receivers, because he do all the offensive drills. He run, I mean, he, this guy is immaculate. You can't get nobody better than him. Trust me. What was your favorite drill, I was saying? You, you said you liked kind of when you were going up against somebody. Yeah, I like going one-on-one -on -one against the wide receivers, because, I mean, you're competing. You're trying to outdo this guy, and he's trying to outdo you. So, I mean, a lot of, a lot of drills that you do on air, stuff like that is good. But a lot of people look good doing stuff on air, but when you got somebody in front of you trying to compete, it's a little bit different. And you were safety, right? DB, yeah, safety, DB, yeah. 
What keeps you coming back, um, Lamont, doing these camps, I mean, for these kids, you know, again and again on a basis? I mean, you and Major, you seem like you have fun. I have video of you guys from the last time laughing, looking at the kids. What, what's it like for you as you're at these camps? You know, I mean, a lot of these kids up here, you know, they be some of them, some of them, because I've been up here for at least three or four years doing these camps, like, they get a good experience out of it. And when they see me and Mage up here doing other camps, when Mage come in town, we go to Jersey, we run into them. They go, oh, Coach, I learned a lot. I, went, I took this stuff that y'all had, did it at another camp, and we like it. And, you know, a lot of them learned a lot of different things because I don't like to have a large amount of number at camps when you don't like to have 40 and 50 kids because it's only me and Mage. So I like to keep the numbers kind of low so you can really concentrate on the kid. If some kid don't have a weakness, he's not doing good, we can work a little, a little longer than other kids. Other camps, you have a lot of kids. You can't really concentrate on a lot of kids when you have a – 300 kids, 200 kids, it's real hard to do that, so. So March 24th, the next Lamont White football camp in our area, get out there. And you're bringing, bringing Major Harris back to the studio here. You know, maybe what we'll do is you can run me through a drill or something. We'll set it up. Okay. I'll bring my shorts and that. We'll do something a little different so, so okay. I can learn a little bit. Lamont, thank you so much for your time. Oh, man, thank you, guys. I really appreciate you. Ken, you're the best. <laughs> right. you. You're coming anytime you want. <laughs> Always a good time with Lamont White. Pick two, once again, the answer to life, the universe, and everything from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 4-2, your midday winning lottery numbers. Pick three, four, three, five. Pick four, five, three, four, eight. Pick five numbers, nine, five, five, nine, one. Wild number is zero. Dave Seaman is here from the Standard Speaker. We're talking all about Hazleton area Cougar basketball when we come back. Now for sports on SSP TV News. What you gonna do, brother, when Cougar Mania goes running wild all over you, Dave? It's, it's going nuts around all of Greater Hazleton. It's great to see as the Hazleton area Cougars make a deep, deep run into the state basketball championships. Dave Seaman, Standard Speaker Sports Editor, has been covering the entire season with Mike Joseph and his team. And Dave, recently I saw this post. This was nice to see. So the game was originally scheduled for two Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, got to keep everything straight here. So that game got postponed. Now playing on Saturday, but on that night they were supposed to play the Hazleton area Cougars went to Milk House Creamery at Bull Arena Dave and they posted on social media that the Cougars were there it got 262 likes so the Cougars very hot light right now a lot of people talking about and we've talked so much Dave about the hysteria in 1993 it seems like it's happening again there's been you, you even had an article it said better late than never once they made the playoffs seeing the support the team's getting yeah and it's happening and I, I don't want to use the word snowball because uh, what's happening outside these past few days but uh, <laughs> it's definitely snowballed and it, it's it's outstanding to see because uh, I said numerous occasions uh, this team and the, the, how hard they've worked and uh, you know they're, they're such fine representatives of the community and um, I, I, they deserve it and from the coaching staff on down to every single player on the team varsity JV even the freshman team had an outstanding season and uh, a lot to be proud of. They're also great to talk with them um, as, as reporters and Dave you I guess what's great about this extended run is you get extended coverage of the basketball team and Dave you've written a number of articles featuring I guess almost all the players on the team now I saw a great one on um, Sparky Wolk and I really enjoyed the one on Demir Faison um, Dave just search um, any of the Cougar players names in Standard Speaker or go to the Standard Speakers website search their names you'll find Dave's articles Demir talking about a missed dunk in a junior high championship game and how his teammates still razz him for that but how has it been getting to know these players a little bit more and showing the area who they are. Yeah, I think it's like uh, it's a fun part of our jobs is to like get to know these players be beyond the basketball court and uh, you, you realize how in like intelligent in the classroom uh, they, they get in the community there. You know, uh, we did a story a, a few weeks back on uh, Charles, Charlie Gennaro, who's been an outstanding fan of the Cougars, Hazleton, Hazleton area basketball for years now, ha had an unfortunate accident, but the team went up to go see him. And, uh, you know, uh, every one of the players almost got, got to see him and visit him. And uh, he made an appearance at the game in Berwick against Norristown. And, uh, you know, I, I know it inspired the boys. And uh, I, I know he's on, in their thoughts, you know, as they make this run forward. And Dave, I've had a lot of time to prepare as they keep moving this semifinal game, reading Dave's articles in the Standard Speaker. So let's get down to business this Saturday, 1 p.m., Bethlehem Freedom High School, Hazleton area versus Lincoln High School, the Rail Splitters. Reading in your article, Dave, you really talked about two players, I mean, from the Rail Splitters. Um, Tyree Corbett, 29 points, 20 rebounds in the quarterfinals. And then also Khalif um, Mires, um, MVP of the Philadelphia Public League. I'm sure there's so much more than that, but those are the two players, I guess, where it starts at. Yeah, they're definitely a deep team, a long team, probably the tallest team, the Cougars 
Rangers have played all season. Uh, they have played teams like that that have tried to press, press and trap them uh, throughout the season. Uh, they're going to try to wear down the Cougars. That's what they tried to do against Neshaminy. Uh, Neshaminy had, uh, if everybody, rem everybody remembers, Archie Diacono from uh, Villanova <laughs> a few years back. Well, his brother uh, Chris is on the Neshaminy team this year. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of points against uh, Lincoln, but Lincoln was able to, you know, prevail at the end because they had more players. Uh, Abington also tried to, you know, throw a lot of players at the Cougars. Uh, and they played well against, you know, teams that have, you know, outstanding depth. They've done that in the past. Uh, you know, Redding tried to wear them down in the only game that they lost this season. But, uh, you know, Cougars made a big comeback in that game as well. I, I think for the Cougars to, you know, it's going to be incumbent upon them to, you know, start well like they did uh, the last several games, uh, you know, kind of get the crowd involved in the game too, which is a, a, an important factor. You know, you can't dispute that. And I don't think uh, the rail splitters have seen, a, you know, a, a crowd that they're going to see on Saturday. Dave, let me ask you this. Um, Hazleton area shot over 60% in their win over Abington. I can't see that happening again. Maybe I'm wrong. What, what do I know? I mean, talk about that a little bit. And what will they need to do then? Because Abington did score in the 80s. Cougars end up scoring in the 90s. What will they have to do against um, Lincoln? I think they have to work their offense. When they when they get a good shot, take it and uh, make it and crash the boards. Uh, that's what they did the other day. Uh, and it didn't matter who was open. Uh, you know, and that's been their MO all season is uh, the person that's open is going to take the shot. And more often than not, they're such talented players, uh, they're going to make shots. Now, you don't expect a team to shoot 62% every game, but uh, I think Coach Joseph will take a 55, 50, 55%, maybe even 48% from the field, as long as they're you know rebounding and uh, holding their own on the defensive end and uh, make foul shots. I think that's going to be very important because Lincoln's going to come out and be very aggressive. Uh, they committed a lot of fouls against Neshaminy in the quarterfinals. Uh, so if you, if you get in the one-on-one, -on -one, you take advantage of those situations. Any kind of free points or if they get two-on-ones, uh, fast break opportunities, uh, make sure they convert on, on, on the offensive end. Get as many points as you can. Uh, if they get a lead like they did against Abington, uh, that works to their advantage. So if you're wrapped up in all the Cougar mania, just can't get enough of Hazleton area basketball, read all of Dave's work and follow on Twitter at, um, Twitter at Seaman Says Sport. He will have all updates from the game. Our John Eric Poli will be at the game as well. Dave, thank you so much for all the great coverage. Looking forward to more of it in the Standard Speaker. Good evening, everyone. Here's today's talk of the town. State Representative Tara Tuhill and U.S. Senator Pat Toomey are currently looking for Vietnam War veterans to attend a ceremony on Wednesday, March 28th from 9 until 10.30 a.m. at the Butler Township Community Center. They ask that all veterans RSVP by Friday, March 23rd. To RSVP, you can call Tara Tuhill's office or Pat Toomey's office at the numbers on your screen. And if anyone would like to drop off any new stuffed animals for the Chemo Buddy Drive, you can do so by dropping off the stuffed animals at the locations on your screen. You must drop them off by March 27th. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send our sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Julianne D. Ackles of McAdoo. Mass is Saturday at 10 a.m. at Church of All Saints in McAdoo. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Damiano Funeral Home in McAdoo. Francis B. Kovalec Sr. of Beaver Meadows. The Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home in Hazleton will announce their arrangements. Mary Ann Postoski of Maine Township. Funeral is Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home in Drums. Friends may call Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the Funeral Home. And Mary Louise Wright of Cunningham. A service will be held Saturday at 11 a.m. at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Cunningham. Friends may call Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home in Hazleton is in charge of the arrangements. Attention pay-per-view subscribers. If you see your name now on SSP TV News, you can call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Today's winner is Marlene Ward of Hazel Township. Call now and leave a message at 570-455. 7267 extension 104 for your free movie. See all of you on Friday. Take it easy. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.